welcome back from that uh, quick break. Now, the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise, CPPE, has urged the Nigerian government to introduce palliatives to mitigate the effect of fuel subsidy removal, particularly on food and transportation costs for citizens. The CPPE suggests reducing import tariffs for intermediate products used by food processing companies and eliminating taxes and levies on agricultural input to boost food production. But just how far can that go? Well, joining me right now to discuss further is uh, Prince Wale Oyekoya, an experienced and practicing farmer and consultant. He is the former chairman of Agricultural Non-Oil Group, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, LCCI, and he is the CEO of Bama Farms Limited. Many thanks for joining me on Business Inside, Prince Oyekoya. It is indeed our pleasure. Okay, let's just get right into this fuel subsidy removal. Uh, aside from the fact that uh, our transport prices uh, or fares have actually gone up and food prices have actually gone up too even before the subsidy removal it's not really been a very wonderful time for nigerians to put uh, food on their tables and in their stomachs but what can really be done right now because a lot of people are calling for uh, palliatives and some people are also saying that uh, there should be subsidies on agricultural uh, sector how do you react really first of all you have to look at the genesis of subsidy how it came to effect and how the successful governments have not been able to remove the subsidy because mm. of the powerful people behind it we call them cabals because mm. if you could remember the, from the former minister for uh, finance uh okonji wala when her mom was kidnapped because of this subsidy issue mm. he said about 147 people were behind this payment of mm. one point six trillion every month mm. around that time that yeah. how is the country going to survive mm. so to me no matter how we look at it we have to give credit to the new president for taking the boot initiatives because mm. this is a subsidy that the previous head of state president right from abdul salam uh basha and mm. Babangida, even Obasanjo, mm. even Buhari have not been able to remove. Remember in 2011, yeah. when Jonathan, Jonathan wanted to remove the subsidy, what happened? Everybody got to the, the street. Yes. That they should not remove the subsidy. Yeah. Had it been that the successful government had been able to remove this subsidy, we would not have found ourselves where we are today. Mm. Because if you have given the refineries to the private sectors, we have we have had a lot of people especially with the modular refinery that they are talking about. Look yes. at Dangote now, within four years, it was able to put out such gigantic uh, refineries. Yes. So had it been that the successful government had been able to do this, the price of work would have come down. Definitely, we just have to be patient mm. with this president. They are just one week today. He has okay. not even set up his uh, ministerial yes. appointment yes. yet. Mm. So let's give him time. Let's see what is going to happen. Because we like it or not, this subsidy is not favoring the large populace. Okay. Yeah, I get all of that, uh, Prince um, Oyekoya. But the thing is that uh, right now, you know, whenever there's an increment in fuel uh, price, a pump price, uh, the entire sector is affected in one way or the other. But the thing is that um, Labour right now is calling for an increment in salary. They're asking for about uh, 200,000 uh, from 30,000. I don't know how, uh, how feasible that is. Aside from that, even with that, if salaries are increased, of course, prices of food would also would go increase. Up. So what do we really have in our heads? Well, just like what the president has said that they are talking about the, the palliatives mm. to cushion the effects, especially in terms of transportation, yeah. how to be able... He's trying to work where we use this uh, petrol so that it doesn't have too much dominance on our consumptions. Mm like the power sector. If the power sector can be increased, most of these uh, small businesses will not have any need mm. to go be buying petrol to power their generators. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we have to understand that this man just, it's what he promised during the election, okay. that is going to remove the sources, just yes. like any other presidential candidates, True. including the Labour Party, PDP, and NPP, that they are going to remove the sources. So what he have done is just a promise that, that, he, already, made. that he made that he's trying to mm. fulfill it. So it's going to be hard. Let us all prepare our mind for that. Mm. 
And the only option for now, if we are going to have more money for other sectors, mm. for other ministries, to do other things like in the infrastructure, like the agriculture we are talking about, because mm. most of the farms we have today, mm. they already went under. Okay. Because there's no equipment to do the value chain, which is the processing of some of these farm produce. Mm. And importation have taken the whole stage of thing that almost 80% of the food we eat today are still being imported. So mm -hmm. some of this money can be channeled into agricultural improvement and transformations. That way we could be able to bring some of these small, small uh, tractors mm -hmm. and equipment to cushion the effect. Okay, so uh, let's still talk about food security, which is uh, our main discussion for right now. Because as it is right now, even before the fuel subsidy removal, we've um, had issues with um, getting enough from food supply for the citizenry, with the effect of uh, you know the uh, security challenges that we have, and that farmers are not actually going to their farms to actually farm these and produces. So how do we begin to tackle all of that? Well. It's very simple. If you get our onions right, that mm. let's go back to the farm. You know, I'm always an advocacy of people going to the back to the farm. That mm. is where we belong initially before we discover oil mm. anyway. Look at the granite pyramids in the north. Everything has been comatose. Look at the rubber plantations, cocoa plantations. Mm. We need to go back to the drawing board. That this oil has caused us so many crises. There is only few people are benefiting. Look at Venezuela today. Most of the refineries in Venezuela are in the hands of most of the private sectors paying taxes to the federal government. Mm. The same thing in the U.S., either in, in Texas and Oklahoma. It's in the hands of private sector. If the same thing can be done here, definitely it's going to really uh, help us in the terms of the food production. Mm. So definitely everybody is going to brace up for high cost of food supply. Mm. And you have, to you have to bear in mind that it's not only the prices that just go up due to our own uh, knowing or doing, mm -hmm. we have the climate change also that mm -hmm. affect us. Recently now we have what we call Ebola disease in tomatoes that mm -hmm. make the prices of tomatoes to go oh, up. Wow. We have it three, four years ago. If you remember, that was when Dangote wanted to have a uh, dang, uh, tomatoes puree mm -hmm. in Kano. Mm -hmm. But that was when this disease set in okay. and he couldn't jumpstart the, mm. the factory. So the same thing is we are having now, but what we are just telling the government is to improve on our R&D, research and development. Mm -hmm. We have not done any more research. Mm -hmm. Most of the seed that we have today that produce some of these fruit and vegetables are being imported. Why can't we do something of our own that is going to be beneficial to our own climate okay. that will be able to maneuver, even if there's any crisis, we'll be able to know where the problem comes from. Okay, so now, the, as I said in my intro, the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise, CPPE, Muda Alawala, is actually calling for the elimination of taxes and levies on agricultural inputs to boost food production. How has it really been? You are a core farmer. So what's, uh, what's been happening in that light in terms of um, taxes and um, you know, levies uh, on agricultural producers? How has it been before now? Definitely we need tax break. That's number one. Then number two, Production have really gone down because mm. of the crisis between the herders and the farmers, uh, kidnapping. I remember in my own place, too, some of the farmers in my area, about two of them were, were kidnapped. That we have to end up paying 15 million, 18 million, respectively, to wow. get their freedom. So, how much money mm. is a farmer making mm. for them demanding 15 million naira? But it had it been that we have not raised the money, they could have killed these people. Okay. So, not only the tax break, the security is a very easy key. Mm. Now that the president already tackled the issue of subsidy, the next line now is the security. Because once security and this subsidy can be taken care of, mm. economy, the economy of the nation will be able to, 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 come, up, to okay. come alive. Mm. So the security aspect is very important. Their funding to the agriculture is mm. very, it's very important. Most of this uh, palliative or most of the interventions Mm. that was rolled out by the CBA and the federal government to the farmers, yes. most of the funds is not getting to the hands of so the why farmers. Not get, because most times uh, that particular uh, sector has been incentivized and uh, we've heard of an anchor boroughs, we've heard of other programs and other, you know, to mitigate uh, the effect of all of this. Uh, most of the times, uh, we've had this discussion before, you say they get to the political farmers. Yes, up to this moment. In mm. fact, 
the anchor borrowers think it was inducted one time for embezzling almost about 20 something billion naira that's supposed to go to the farmers. So we have so many political and portfolio farmers around the CBN corridor, mm. uh, around the government, federal government corridor. That immediately this, uh, uh, this fund is coming, they will be the first one to tap into it and they will create a ghost farmers mm. that they will collect that they will come so many times they have been to my farm that they are collecting data that oh there's a phone coming from the federal government that is supposed to be for the farmer but at the end of the day we don't even see the light of so the how day. do we tackle this uh, shouldn't there be some sort of um uh Check organization and checks and balances uh, maybe cooperative the real farmers are forging a common front so that these funds can actually go to them directly as i say it's policy mm. Once we have people's oriented policy, people will be part of the policy. But most of the policies we are having today, most of the stakeholders are not carried along. Mm. So by the time the funds comes in, it just go to the same to the hands of the same people that set up this policy. Okay. So until everybody could come to the round table that this is what we wanted to do, and this is how we're going to channel the money. We have mm. cooperative, we have individual farmer, they have the database, mm. but they never go through that database. Okay. So as we round off now, uh, Prince um, Oyekoya, you know, you are a farmer, you are well enlightened, uh, but not most, not all the farmers, uh, I would say, have um, the experience and the qualification and of course the education to understand what uh, this whole uh, subsidy removal and the effect would be for them. What sort of encouragement can you pass on to the average farmer in the hinterland who is scared that with the fuel subsidy that um, they might not really be able to get as much as they used to. Well, Just information is key. Mm -hmm. The federal government needs to pass out the information to the, especially to the rural farmers. Mm -hmm. And that's why we'll be talking about technology being introduced into the agriculture in the country. And I hope with the new president we have mm -hmm. today, we'll be able to introduce technology so that people in the rural areas will know what is going on in the city mm -hmm. and what the government have for them. Mm -hmm. So that the money being shining or the funds being shining to boost the agriculture, we're not going to the hands of the portfolio farmers. All right, well, that's a very big thank you to you. I wish we had much time, you know, but we'll have to bring you again to look at uh, some of these issues that are really very salient so that um, Nigerians could actually have food uh, in their stomachs and uh, in as much as there might be issues, at least they can have food to eat. Uh, a very big thank you to you, Prince Wali Oyekoya, CEO, Bama Farm. Thanks for all of the useful insight that you have brought on the show for today. Thank you for having me, please. All right, uh, that's the size of the show for this morning. Business Insight will return again to your screen, same time, 9.30 tomorrow. Many thanks for watching. I am Justin Akadonye. Bye for now. <laughs>